When we arrived in Ann Arbor, we thought surely our lives are over. There's no architecture, we know nobody, we have no family here. I have this great job, and that's why we're here. There's this place to the east. Uh, it's called Detroit. I see a lot of reverberance from downtown New York in the late 70s and 80s, which is where my formative musical artistic experiences were. The place was just in a state of decay, crisis. What emerged from that were punk music, uh, rap music, major, major musical movements. I get the sense that there's that here as well, that there's a lot of under the radar activity. He's one of those guys like me who he moved here and he was like, how come there's not more shit going on in this town? He, he knew about us, and I, I knew about him. Virgil has this downtown sensibility that very much fits in artistically with, with the group. I mean, to me, he's, he's a real legitimate local heavyweight. Siamese Kits, the one, the piece we ended up programming, I, I, just, I just heard that piece. I was like, this is, this piece is great. Immediately, I, I was a little selfish. I know, I know. Like, I would love to play this piece with him. I grew up in Switzerland. There was this youth center, and there was only one drum kit there, and there was another kit, and I heard, you know, he was a good drummer. There was only one kit, but there were, like, two pedals. And so we put, just on a whim, we put the pedals on opposite sides of the kick drum, and there were two toms, and we just had this idea to slant them, and we just started jamming. And over the years, um, it gradually developed into something that started to take on a fixed form. And finally, in, uh, in 2003, I sat down and said, okay, this is going to be the fixed piece from beginning to end. It is an amalgamation of my march drumming experience, my experience uh, playing drums for Swans, my experience playing with uh, Glenn Branca, my experience playing in you know, hardcore uh, um, speed metal bands such as Damage, you know, CBGB's matinees, hardcore matinees used to play. Rehearsing that piece with him, he's just always pushing for just getting that right character. You could really get lost in the music, great, in that piece, in, in the page, oh, in the ink, fun. as we say. Are you sure you play classical? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted it to be so free and have like a Led Zeppelin kind of John Bonham rock and roll energy, and um, and it was great because he really he pushed me. He warned me before we got together the first time. He's like, I'm gonna warn you, I'm, I play very loud. He's used to backing up Glenn Branca and his ensemble of 30, 40 electric guitarists, you know, and he's the one guy on drum set having to back that up. So he comes with that kind of energy and volume. And I come from this orchestral, we spend so much time practicing how soft we can play. I don't think I've ever played louder in my life. There's definitely a primal thing about it. That's what's so satisfying to play. Um, what I like about the piece is that you have to be thinking while at the same time you are physically, you know, it's full contact. If you drop the ball for one second, you can throw the entire piece off. You have to just think your part and count your bars and play.
Ian is not holding back. You know, he's stepping up, <laughs> you know? I hit this hard, he'll match it. You know, I set down this groove, he'll match it and raise me one. And then, of course, the hard thing is, how do you keep it from spiraling out of control? I mean, by the time it gets to the end, you know, I'm like, how fast are we taking this? I'm grounded here now in some way because unexpectedly um, my work is really happening in Detroit. I mean, I've, I've produced, um, you know, a, a 50 minute piece since I came here. I've, I've had performances and yes, of course, I'm touring uh, internationally, but, but a lot of it is with stuff that I have written since I got here. So something is going very right.